it's Ann over at Plant Obsessed, and today we're going to look in on all of my project bins. So that means all the different projects that I have going as experimental forms of vermicomposting. So many of them have started out of uh, viewers' questions. Other things have started from people saying, I don't have a shredder, I don't have this, I don't have that, can I still do this? So, uh, one of my answers to that is the lasagna bin. Um, really one of the most simple things. Five dollar mortar tray uh, you can get from a big box store like Home Depot or something like that. Um, and then really all else you need is some boxes and some food. So starting with the lasagna bin. If you remember last time it's been about two weeks and we put apple goo in some Amazon boxes that had been soaked and then we put a dry box, which is this one, on top to kind of buffer the moisture. So as you can tell, the moisture must have been very good because this box, which was dry, is now wet. So let's have a look and see what they are accomplishing. As I said, it's been about 15 days. Okay, let me see. Can you see the worm ball over here? Let me move that into a little bit better focus. So you've got a good, good amount of worms right there, all hanging out in the apple goo. So let's, I'm going to put it back here, and then I'm going to start peeling. And you see, again, good volumes of worms. Start peeling more. Oops, all right, guys. Stay in the bin. So this is the first layer. I honestly didn't think after two weeks that there would be any apple goo left, but they surprised me. They've got goo left. Let's look down to the next layer. Let's see if I can get the, the in-between layer here. So maybe there wasn't enough worms in here to completely eat all of the apple goo. So that's, that's interesting that they are, are not done with their apple goo. But I will go ahead and put them back. I don't have to feed them today because they've got more than enough apple goo. But you can see the castings right here in the middle. And they have enough moisture and they have enough bedding in the form of these cardboard pieces and so I'm just going to reassemble them and let them continue on with their project and I am checking to see if any worms have escaped with me moving things around so nobody on my finger all right so that is the two-week update on the apple goo in the lasagna bin Next up is what I have been calling the mushroom bin, which started out with um, mushroom bedding. Um, I kind of wondered if I might get mushrooms if the worms couldn't grow mushrooms like they do avocados and mangoes. But as of right now, I have not seen any evidence of that. When we first put the uh, mushroom bedding in here, you did see quite a bit of kind of like mold over the top of it that looked different than other kinds of mold that I normally get, but I didn't get any mushrooms. So I don't know if I didn't leave it for enough time or there wasn't enough spores, the right kind of spores, I'm not sure. If you've actually grown mushrooms in um, vermicompost, put that in the comments below. Let me know what you guys have done. So I'm going to kind of turn things up here and see what they've been doing. Now I've told you about the changing seasons in my basement here and uh, we have not yet got to the part where things are getting super dry, which is nice. I don't have to add uh, a lot of moisture to the bins to keep them at a good rate. And you can tell that this is a, is a good moisture. All right, so let's see, what did I feed them last time? Uh, looks like I gave them some banana and I did read it this time or watch it this time. did have some bananas and tomatoes and a corn, little corn. 
So I'm not seeing any of the tomato. We also had a mango pit that was in progress. So we still have our slow foods, which is our mango pit, and this looks much smaller than it did last time. But as you can tell, absolutely full of worms. Isn't that crazy? Um, so yeah, as far as the fast food, the, the tomatoes are completely gone, but what is left of the mango and the avocado is all gone. So maybe these worms need a little bit bigger of a feeding than I gave them last time. So let me gather up all of the slow food here. Make sure I get it all and so we can put the feedings together. Little corn husk there. All right. So make them a little divot here and I will get them some bedding. All right, so this is the prepared bedding that has the, the grit already in it. Um, I do have plans to make a new bedding video. I just don't have it done yet. But I'm going to put the old food here in the middle. Hopefully make it a little bit more tantalizing. And then I'm going to get them some new food. So they're getting some more bananas, more kiwi, tea bags, and then more of the avocado shells in an avocado pit. And this is one of my Florida avocados, so maybe, maybe these guys will germinate. I don't know. Hopefully that is enough food with the bedding uh, for these guys. And uh, let me know, what do you want the next experiment to be with this? Because I don't think we're getting anywhere with the mushrooms. So let me know what you think for this for the next one, or do I just turn it into a, uh, a grow-up bin and, and harvest it and then move on to something else later? All right, if you have any ideas, let me know in the, in the comments. I think it is getting far enough that I can probably harvest this. All righty. back on and on to the next. All right, on to the eat my shirt bin. They do seem to enjoy this lid when I put it on there. You can tell they make beautiful castings right there under the lid. Look at that. Isn't that crazy? Let's see, what did I feed them last time? Um, they got pineapple. So they have just completely made castings on top here, right underneath that little lid. That's, that's crazy to me. That's good job, worms. All right, so I know there was pineapple in here. Oop, brand new cocoon. So let's see what they're doing with the pineapple. Shirt's making some good progress. Made a lot of progress. I think the pineapple helped it. Let's see. Mango pit's doing good. The corn is making progress. Oh, there's a part of the t-shirt that wasn't wet, and it's still making better progress. So I'm not seeing any of that pineapple. For everybody listening on headphones, you can tell I'm doing laundry. Some of the people said they can't hear the water in the pipes and everything, um, but I always hear it when I'm doing editing, and I'm always like, ugh, I've got to stop doing laundry at the same time as I'm doing my videos. It's annoying. But, like I have done, I feel like I need to multitask. Let's see. Mango pit. With the worms. I just love their little mango pit hiding places. So some of this seems wet and some of it seems dry. So let's just mix that all together and 
get all the food together and then we'll get them another good meal. In fact, I think I'm going to give them a new shirt. I think since they are doing such a lovely job with that one shirt and it is almost entirely gone, I think they deserve to have another shirt. As I said, planning on going vacation in a little, a little over a month and uh, hopefully I'll get some new cool t-shirts. This donated shirt brought to you by Taos, New Mexico. That was a fun trip. Um, and here we go. Fun trip now becoming worm food. Okay, well not the whole trip, but the t-shirt from the trip. So that goes down in the bottom with what's left of the, the Bradley shirt. And then let's get them some more food. Okay, oh, I can't really see what this is, but I'm thinking onions, just by the smell. Onions and kiwis and peppers, oh my. So, no, oh, I actually, oh, ginger peels. Yeah, I made curry, that's what it was. All right, let me get them a little bit of bedding that's not t-shirt. Uh, make sure to keep it all nice and fluffy in here. Give them a little bit of grit and then cover that up with the existing castings. And again, I actually think this, this bin's probably getting real close considering what the top looked like when I came back. So this might be getting ready for a harvest palooza. All right guys, on to the next bin. Alrighty, on to the worm chow only bin. We've got a lot of hangers on here. Let's see, what did I... I'm trying to see if I gave them more... Yeah, I did give them some more bedding last time. Alright, let's keep an eye on that. Alright, so let's fluff these guys up and see what we got. Oh, there's also a shirt in here. I don't know, I think they are maybe gaining a little bit of size from what I normally see in my uh, normal mixed bins. You guys watch this, you know, as much as I do. Do you think that I'm getting some, some size on these blue worms from just feeding them uh, worm chow all the time? Let me know your thoughts in the bottom. Because this is mostly blue worms and red worms, not very many European night crawlers at all. Looks like they went through all that bedding, though. Oops. Real okay. quick. Yeah. Yeah, they are certainly also doing a good job with bedding. Alright, well, I don't have any non... Let's see, what am I doing here? So for the worm chow bin, I'm going to spread their t-shirt out here and give them a little more bedding. All right, let's get them some worm chow. Okay, so this is my worm chow. It is a third cornmeal. Let's see if I can get a handful of it for you to look at. So it's a third cornmeal, ground oatmeal, and then um, regular old wheat flour, and then it's got the grit already in there. All right, well, looks like I'm kind of doing something different from what I normally do, but smooth that out a little bit and then kind of incorporate it a little bit. I think the moisture is doing good in here. All right, so that's about how much I feed them, basically a a good handful every time. Um, but yeah, I guess this thing, considering how fast they're going through the bedding, this might be uh, getting close to uh, needing a harvest as well. 
if you uh, feed just worm chow to your worms, how frequently do you um, harvest your bins if you're using the same sort of uh, method here with the mortar trays? Let me know how often do they cycle. On to the next bin. Here we are at the no grit bin. Okay, so I washed my hands before I got into the no grit bin here. And let's see how they're doing. Seeing lots of baby worms. Um, all of my project bins are a mix of the red wigglers and the um, blue worms and the European night crawlers. It looks like they also ate up all of the um, paper that I added last time. So, looks like they had pineapple. Looks like the only thing I'm seeing is maybe the core. So, I don't have any uh, bedding down here that does not have any grit. Uh, so I think I'm going to give them a t-shirt. Alright. So anybody local will know that this is a restaurant t-shirt. They had a five-year giveaway or something like that. Uh, really good Mexican restaurant around where I live. Uh, Hacienda Fuentes. So that's what they're going to get for betting at this point. I'm just going to give them, give them a t-shirt. And then let's get them fed up. Alright, so zucchinis and tomatoes, tea, peppers, and a cucumber. So that's a pretty good size feeding for them. Um, I think they should do okay with that. So, still no grit, and they're still multiplying. If you look at the distribution of worms, you're seeing young worms. Um, not, let me find a cocoon here. So there's a nice, nice cocoon there. The worms aren't overly big in the system. I don't know if that has something to do with the grit, um, but they don't seem to be, you know, slowing down their reproduction, and uh, they're not dying off. I'm definitely getting an increase of worms, and they're definitely, um, you know, going through the food as fast as any other bin. So I think once I harvest this, I will probably start back up and do a no grit bin with just, uh, you know, paper and coconut coir and uh, not the leaves because maybe the leaves had some sort of uh, grit in them from when they were you know raked up or whatever so we'll hit this again to make sure just to make sure but I mean it's not having problems having baby worms look at that little tiny worm there alrighty okay on to the next one Okay, looking at the leftover bins, uh, I did have a lid on this, which is why they're crawling all over the place. Just trying to retain some of the moisture in here, which I have done. Um, maybe. Still doesn't seem to be that great of a moisture. But this is the leftover bin with the, um, with the smallest size leftovers. I could probably do another harvest on this. I think uh, for the harvest bin, I think I did feed them some tomatoes. I think I'm seeing some evidence of tomato there, but still not not as uh, the good moisture as I was hoping for when I added the moisture last time. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and give them quite a bit of um, some basically just coconut core that's really wet. Um, I'm going to flip them around, make sure it's all homogenous. 
but this is too dry. Um, I do run my bins a little bit drier than normal, or you know, most people, but I think this is too dry. So let me get something nice and wet for them. Alrighty, so got some really wet coconut core that I was soaking for my next bit of bedding. So I'm gonna incorporate that. Um, you know, it's hard for them to make progress if there's no moisture in the bin. And I thought that the last time I had done enough, but apparently it was not. So of course I'm gonna go overboard this time. So it's probably gonna be a flipping mess next time. Can I just get back in the pin? When you put lids on, it's counter counterintuitive, but when you put lids on a bin, the moisture collecting on the inside of the lid actually makes them crawl. And I do have this stacked with the other leftover bin, which is why I had the lid on so I could stack them. And it's a pretty tight lid and it's on an actually another system. So if they were to jump out of this system, they would just jump into another mixed kind of worm system. So we have a backup plan for anybody who tries to escape. I'm not going to give them any more food with as much water as that was. I'm hoping that it'll make the leftovers here a little bit more tantalizing. They got a good size feeding last time, so um, this water should maybe help them, you know, start getting at it. All right, let me move you on to the big leftover bin. Okay, so this is the large leftover bin with the really big uh, food being left in it. Got a little green apple in there. I think they're making some progress though, for real. You can see good castings right there. And again, I also gave them a lot of water last time, hoping that that would really entice them to uh, get going on these um, bigger items. I don't think it's ready to have another sifting, but I do think it's it's made quite a bit of progress from the last time we looked at it, which was a little over a month ago. But yeah, so it's doing good. I think, what do you think, a little more water? Do a little bit more water through the label. Okay, more coconut pour water and I'll mix that in and maybe next time we look at this in a little over a month maybe second week of November maybe and hopefully this another label uh, maybe this will be you know I can sift these two and, and get something out of it so again I'm not going to give them any new food. I can kind of smell um, the apple and stuff that I put in here last time still. So I'm going to leave it. Now that it's nice and wet, they should be able to go through it pretty decently. Um, one last bin, we're going to look in on the baby bin and then that will be the end. All right, let's get this put on. Okay. Here's the baby bin. And so they have been getting some good feedings. So I see some, some small worms in here. Seeing some that are getting a little bigger. So that's good. And this is also a mixture of all the different kinds of bins. So this is all the babies, even the African night crawlers. 
which as it gets colder, if there were anyone, any of them in here, they wouldn't have, uh, um, they wouldn't have much of a chance. Oh, looks like I found a reasonably mature blue, blue worm here. I'll put him in blue. And then we're going to feed them some pretty good food today. I think I have underestimated what the babies will eat. So we're going to put in some of the melon. And we're also going to give them some grit. Okay. Put that over. And then I will give this side a piece of melon. Come on. This side. Get there. And also give them some grit. And then maybe the next time I'll be able to uh, harvest out some of the, the babies and put them into a new system. So if you do this sort of same sort of thing where you put all the uh, cocoons in one place and wait for them to um, hatch, how long do you usually wait in between harvests to get them to get them all to come out? All right, guys. Well, if you like the video, give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me and my worms. And everybody, have a good day.